we day. There are some who change an individual life. There are some who touch the lives of their family, others, their community. Very few might help change a province or a state, and then a few still an entire country, but very few have forever shaped the world. Our next guest is one of those individuals. Now, it is an extraordinary honor to have him with us. He is the former president of Colombia. He negotiated, he negotiated an end to that 50-year conflict. He is credited not only with receiving the Nobel Peace Prize in 2016, but redefining what peace means around the world. I'm going to ask all of you to please rise from your seats to join us in recognizing a hero of our time, President Juan Manuel Santos. So it is such an honor to have you here with us in negotiating an end to a 50-year civil war. Many said it was impossible. And when you needed to hold that hope, when all seemed lost, what gave you the inspiration to make the impossible possible? Well, I was born and raised in a country at war. My kids also. We had more than eight and a half million victims. That's 10 times the amount of people that died in the American Civil War. So I didn't want my grandchildren, I have my first grandchildren just a, a few months ago. Congratulations. And the, and the next generation of Colombians to live in that country at war. So that was my inspiration, talking to the victims hearing their dramas, but hearing their will to continue. But the strength that I got to persevere because we lost a referendum were the young people of Colombia who went to the streets, who went to the plazas, demanding a new agreement. And they asked me, they demanded me to continue, to persevere, and I did. Could we please give a round of applause? Thank you. And to all the young people here, I promise you will tell your children and grandchildren about this moment so I know that you will, in pin drop silence, continue to listen to this extraordinary moment with us here today. You know, you have been an extraordinary advocate for young people around the world. You know, you have stood on behalf of many youth organizations. What hope do you have for the next generation and what they can achieve that we have yet to achieve? Well, definitely stop climate change. The, they are in the year 2050, when most of you will be my age, and this is just one example, there will be more plastics in the oceans than fish. That's the problem we have. We need to join forces to save our environment because we need to understand that we are one race, which is called humanity. And there is one world, our house, that we need to preserve. And it's in your hands, in the hands of the young people, to stop climate change and preserve our universe. Absolutely. Now, the extraordinary work that you've done in the peace process, what are the lessons that you want the world to draw from that, the lessons to share as the world gathers with the United Nations, and the one thing that young leaders should all have in common as we draw lessons? Well, first of all, I was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize not for attaining peace, not for achieving peace, but because I never stop trying. That was the reason. And my, my message to you today, I was a, a cadet in the Colombian Navy. 
they taught me a very important lesson, how to sail. And uh, when you are going to sail, if you go out without knowing where you're going to go, all the winds will turn against you. But if you know where you're going, you can use all the winds, even the strong winds, to get to the place you want. So have a port of destiny, have a goal, and keep trying. If you fail, keep trying, and you will get there. To all the young people here, I'm gonna ask you to join me in rising in a standing ovation to a man who has redefined peace, who brought an end to the conflict, and we all owe a huge debt of gratitude. Sir, thank you on behalf of a grateful generation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.